All right, y'all, welcome back to Dorian's DIY audio. So in the last video, I had installed the uh, Down for Sound 612 Plus DSP in my truck. And my intentions was to make one video explaining you the whole process of kind of tuning this thing. Um, and then I realized that that video is going to be entirely too long. All right, so what I want to do is... Um, I'm going to take this opportunity to kind of make a couple, like a series out of this. So keep your eyes out down the road for more videos pertaining to this topic. But the first thing I want to do is I want to go over um, what do you do with the crossovers on your amplifier when you install a DSP? Right, so there's a few different types of these crossover networks I would like to go over for you and help you understand something. So uh, something real quick I want you to kind of keep in mind. When I say uh, all pass, full range, or off, that all means the same thing. That's a full range signal, okay? And... Um, those if they have a switch that should be with no slope anyway let's go ahead and look at this real quick so here on this amplifier and this is the same amplifier i have in my vehicle and it really doesn't matter the brand we're looking at the crossover networks themselves right see the various options you have here so on your gain uh hopefully you guys know what a gain is right but uh you see here if you have six volts going into these RCAs, right, then you can pretty much have your gain all the way down, okay? If the weaker your signal is going into the amplifier, the more you would have to turn this gain up to match the source signal, okay? Uh, so we'll kind of leave that at that. Now, let's go over the high pass filter and what is a high pass filter right so this high pass filter or any high pass filter is let's say we take this knob and just twist it up here to this 67 right that's 67 hertz that means that anything from 67 hertz upward in a frequency range will play okay and then over here on the other side, you'll see you have a gain also. And then you have a high pass and a low pass with a selectable switch here in the center, right? And then also uh, we'll get into this shortly here. So the high pass works exactly the same over here as it does over there. If you once move that up to 50 hertz, uh, anything 50 hertz up will play if you had this switch here and the high pass filter selected area, right? Now, if you move this switch over to the low pass and let's say you turn this volume or this knob up to 107 hertz, low pass, that means that anything from 107 hertz down is going to be played okay it's going to allow those signals to flow through okay now this amplifier and you will see this sometimes where you have this one times or ten times selectable switch and you'll also see that you have two different parameters written below this potentiometer here right you have a 50 hertz to 500 hertz and that is the range, the frequency range, if you had it in the one time selection switch. Now, if you moved it over to the 10 times, that now goes from 500 hertz all the way up to 5 kilohertz, also known as 5,000 hertz. Okay. Now, um, if you're running a DSP on this, you would set this to full range and then you would control that via your DSP. Okay, if you're not, then you would either set your low pass 
right? Or your high pass, depending on what you were doing. Now, let's go down and look at this subwoofer, a channel five, because this one has a couple more things on here I wanted to go over. So a subsonic filter is basically a high pass filter for your subwoofer. They just call it a subsonic. And this one goes from 10 hertz to 50 hertz. So if you turn that up to 22 hertz, that would allow 22 hertz up to wherever you set your low pass. So if you set your low pass at 130, it'll go 22 hertz to 130 and play in that area there. Okay. So now here's something that's a little controversial with people. And I think it's because they don't understand it. You'll hear a lot of people say that bass boost, bass boost should not be used. And if you don't know what you're doing with it, then you're right. You shouldn't use it. But there's a reason why they include this into the crossover network. And this one here particularly is nice because it has an adjustable frequency range where most of them are not adjustable. You're not always going to see an adjustable. You'll see a bass boost like gain switch, right, from zero to whatever. Uh, but this one will allow you to set the frequency that it's boost. And it's basically like a one band EQ. Okay, so you will turn, say you turn this to 41 hertz, and then you turn this to 3 dB. Then in a range of 41 hertz, it will boost that frequency roughly three decibels. Okay, so real quick on that one, let's go ahead and check out another amplifier. This is a nice JL Audio RD400-4, all right? And um, here's another thing. So on this amplifier, you do have the filter mode, selectable switch, off being full range, high pass, and then low pass. So once again, on high pass, if you were to set this at 50, that means that that speaker will play 50 hertz all the way up into the frequency range, right? And if you set it on low pass, then it would play 50 hertz down. So that would be like 50 hertz for your subwoofer. Low pass would be for your subwoofer, let's say. Um, and you could do like a mid range, right? Or whatever, but let's just keep it simple. And then high pass, if you move that to 80 and up, say you had a set of components in the front, uh, or you were just running a mid bass off the front, or even a mid range, um, if you put it on high pass, 80, 80 hertz and up, okay? Um, let's look at this Morel lamp. I like, I like this one here, and this is a little different from what you're mostly gonna see. Now, of course, Morel is a little bit higher, class higher um, stature of um, equipment, right? Um, but here you see there's just a, this is a power ground and remote. And then you have two speaker terminals because this is a two channel amp. And then you have your RCA ends and then one button and a clip light. That's it. Now, uh, this amplifier does not have a crossover suite and this is why i wanted to show you um and if you look right here no onboard crossover filters right so you have to have an external crossover or a dsp to run this amplifier right and then this little button here is for rca levels or uh high level input okay um, let's jump over to this tar amps because this is another interesting one where you don't have any switches to be able to control anything. Now, this is a full range amplifier and your level is going to be your gain. Level is also known as gain. Then you have a high pass adjustment and a low pass adjustment and a bass boost. Now, this type of crossover will allow you to do what we call a band pass. And that is, uh, let's say you had a mid range you were playing on this. You could set your high pass to 80 Hertz 
so that would play 80 hertz up and then uh, your low pass you can set that let's just make that uh, let's act like that this would be 5k right here at the top so then it'll play 80 hertz to 5k but if you wanted to have the full range and control it with a DSP, what you would do is you would take this low pass and turn that all the way down to 10 hertz. So 10 hertz all the way up. And then on your low pass, you would take your, uh, you would turn this all the way up to full, right? And that's going to allow from the top of whatever this amplifier plays all the way down. So you'll get the full range signal there. And then of course you have a, a bass boost. And this is what I was talking about earlier where some of them are fixed. Uh, this, and I, I don't look, I haven't looked in the specs to see what this is fixed at, but you just get the amount of boost. You don't get to pick the frequency. Now there was one more amplifier that I wanted to show. Now I picked this one particular amp for a reason. Someone had made a whole video talking about how bad audio control amplifiers was and that they felt they couldn't get the bottom, bottom end out. And I suspect that they were trying to use this amplifier to power some IB subwoofers, which are known to be able to play very low. Okay. Um... So here, you know, same thing as before. This is your low pass filter because this is a, a mono block. And you're going to have, you know, if you set this to 100, it's going to play 100 hertz down, right? This one actually has a polarity switch. So you can switch it. And that would be the same thing as if you were to reverse the uh, speaker outputs. And I think those are over here, right? Um now, even though this is a mono block, it does have two sets and that's internally bridged. So it doesn't matter. OK, uh, but what I wanted to show you on this amplifier here was this says that it has a PFM subsonic uh, set to 24 hertz. Right. And if we go back here, you'll see in the notes, it says fix subsonic filter now the older audio control stuff uh used what was known as a pfm module they have these in uh a lot of their uh older the older design line output converters and some of their old amplifiers and this is a module you can build them or i think you can find these on ebay for pretty cheap and on this page their page if you go to accessories and find pcm modules you have a uh, uh, you can download this to figure out how to build your own Okay, so if you ever run into that issue with these amplifiers, that's something I wanted to let you know. One other quick thing I wanted to show you is that it is standard for your all of these amplifiers to have a slope on their crossover of 12 dB. So this is the JL Audio. Um, this one here is 24 dB, which is not common, but it's cool that they have it. Um, that is a very common across the board. So, uh, I hope that those were something that I explained to you guys so that if you're looking to, um, run, if you're looking to figure out how to run your crossovers for your, uh, DSB, that this helped clear some of that stuff up. Anyway, remember to like comment, subscribe, and share, and uh, keep your eye out because I will be making or continuing forward with this here. Uh, the next video is going to be more into uh, going over the software of the Down for Sound, and we'll, we'll have some pretty good information in there for you, but one video would, be, would have been too long. So anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time, peace.